to everyone. I didn't even know that was the title of my speech, but okay. So today I'll be telling you a little story. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Hope you're excited because I'm nervous as heck. Okay, at the tender age of 11, when I got back home from evening school, my mother stood there and asked me, what happened to you? Why do you look like a mess? When I came back home all ragged and bruised up, so I told her that I just got into a fight with some of the boys in school. And then she asked me why. And I said, I don't know. I never did anything to them, nor did I even know who they were. They just simply came up to me and started hitting me in the head and in the back. And then my mom was furious, and she said, well, did you tell the teachers about it? And I said, I did. I did tell the teachers about it. But then the teachers said that it was partially my fault for attracting too much attention. See, I never really understood why it happened until I was 12 years old and I was in a tuition class where the teacher nonchalantly made a comment in front of everyone else in the class. I pity you, ah. Why, teacher? Yalla, people like you probably don't live that long. And I immediately said, excuse me? <laughs> so I got back home that night and I sat down and I took a really long glance in the mirror, like a good couple of minutes, it could probably have been one hour. And then it all finally dawned on me. Oh, I'm different. See, it had never occurred to me before that I was anything but normal. I mean, why would I think I was different? I was just a kid trying to enjoy his own life and make new friends and explore the world unknown. But because I looked different, I was treated very differently by everyone else around me. Everyone except for my parents, that is. They um, managed to um, encapsulate me inside of this overprotective little oblivious bubble. <laughs> God bless. But it took me a while to digest everything. How could looking the way I am lead to so many conflicts that could have been avoided if I could just blend in and fit in with the rest of the kids? But today, we're not here to talk about the differences. We're not here to talk about how people who can never get accustomed to these changes and people who are just so slow to adapt. Today, we're here to talk about how these differences could serve as a source of strength for us to elevate ourselves into being more better, compassionate humans. See, my differences come from my condition. I'm a person living with albinism. And in case you don't know what it is, Albinism is basically a genetic condition in which you're born without pigments in your skin, hair, and eyes. Ta-da! <laughs> but this also means that I can't stand under the sun for more than a couple of minutes without developing severe, painful burns and blisters on my skin. And the fact that I can't see very well from the fact that light just doesn't diffuse properly into my eyes, which is sometimes a good thing, because to be honest, I can't actually see all of you, so it actually helps with the nervousness in talking in front of an audience. <laughs> okay, but this translates to the way I live my life as well. I could never really see what the teachers or lecturers wrote on the whiteboard without the help of my little mini telescope, or play outside like the rest of the kids without slathering myself with layers upon layers of sunblock and bringing an umbrella with me wherever I go. Now you must be thinking to yourself, Gosh, all these things that this guy has listed sucks. And you are absolutely right. They do suck. But without them, without the ex these experiences, the restrictions that I had to live with, I wouldn't be half the man that I am today. Heck, I would probably not even be here right now talking to all of you. See, there are strengths to being different. And I only realized that during my angsty teen years. I mean, like, come on teenagers, when I even tried to reject my own existence. Of course, life wasn't easy, but for most of the kids out there, it seemed like it was. So why couldn't I be exactly like that? Why do I have to be different? But then I realized one thing, that we are all different in one way or another, because when you're different, it feels as if you are a living, walking target. 
that people are just so ready to aim and shoot at, mostly for their pleasure. But one thing that you have to realize is that all of us could be wa the next walking target. We all look differently, we all dress differently, we all sound differently. To be different, it also means that you need to understand what it's like to be normal. So I started looking for the commonalities instead. To compensate for my differences, I had to work harder to prove my worth. Especially when all eyes are on you, you have no other choice but to stand up for yourself. To be the hero of your own story, it would mean that you have to forge your own path. And it is a long and lonely and tiresome journey, let me tell you. But ever since that night, I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't take any of this anymore, that I would stand up to all of my bullies. And ever since then, I did. I stood up to all of my bullies that has ever made all of those remarks. But not only that, I befriended those who were bullied as well. See, the entire landscape of school changed when I was around. There were no more bullies anymore, not when I had anything to say about it. So when you're different, it also means that it's easier for you to be noticed for all the things that you do, for you to make an impact, for you to get your message across easily, to have a voice, and to be really, really loud about it. I mean, especially in this day and age of the internet and social media, everyone is just trying so hard to stand out and be unique, and in some ways be validated for their existences, am I right? If social media was even a thing back when I was growing up and my parents ever decided to publicize me, I could probably be a celebrity by now. <laughs> People these days, they're just so embracing of the idea of change, which is good. But change did not come then. Change wasn't there when I was growing up alone and confused and not knowing what to do. I had to be my own change. I had to rise up to the occasion and prove to everyone, but more importantly, to myself, that all of these conditions that I was laid out with, it would not dictate the things that I could or could not accomplish in life, that I could do so much better. And that was exactly what I did. So suddenly, school just seemed like too small of a playing field for me, that I needed to embark on a journey of an even grander scale. And that was exactly what I did. I traveled around the country in search for people who were just like me, different, people who stood out from society like a sore thumb. And from that on, we became friends and we forged new friendships, and we established all of these different charity programs together. And I had the pleasure of watching about how all, all of these different people adapted to their differences, you know? how they managed to accomplish feats that people like us could only ever dream of accomplishing. And I got to watch at how they mastered their crafts and bloomed into the most elegant flowers that could have ever graced the garden. Once you make space in your heart to accommodate for their differences, can you truly appreciate the beauty, the inner beauty that they have to offer? Which leads me to my next point, being different has also taught me to look beyond the fine lines of what humans present themselves as. Now, let me ask you a very simple question. From the moment that I went up on stage, what was your first initial reaction when you looked at me? Oh, who is he? <laughs> Thank you. Who is he? Why does he look like that? Um, does he have a condition? Is he of mixed heritage? But why is his skin so pale? Is it disease? Is it contagious? These questions running around in your head right now, they are things that I have to answer to every single day. And I realized that for those people who do ask me these questions, they usually do not seek to offend. After all, we are curious creatures and that we just want to know, right? So I could treat all of these advances, all of these questions as mere annoyances or I could use the moment to connect with this one curious stranger to quickly break the ice and break down the layers that they have, to see them in a different light so that we could understand each other better. 
And that was exactly what I did. I mean, in this point, in my talk right now, I've broken down some of my layers to you as well, right? Now, you have a better understanding of me just as much as I to you. See how easy it is for a room full of strangers to warm up to each other's presence? It's nice. So once I tried to change my perspective on how I viewed the world and how I presented myself, it has led me to so many new friendships out there. Someone who could seem all big and intimidating could suddenly be gushing over me, asking me about where I'm from about, or who I am, and seeing someone else's face be rejuvenated in joy and excitement as I tell them that I'm Malaysian just as much as they are. It never gets old. <laughs> and that was when I realized one crucial thing, that every single one of us, we could come in all sorts of shapes and forms in size and color, right down to our mannerism. But it's not in the differences that's important, but the similarities that we could seek in it. Perhaps one day, once we could look past the physicality, could we truly transcend as a species, where all the conflicts happening around us right now can be resolved if you could just take a step back and understand that deep down, we're all pretty much the same, that we all just want a place to belong. Learn to adapt to the differences and to not be afraid of things that challenge your conventions, and you will realize just how easy it is for you to navigate in and out of any form of foreign situation out there. As a species, we're very diverse and dynamic. And with each passing day, you could realize just how easy it is for you to find commonality or you to be alienated for not finding something that fits in your little mold, in your criteria. Because every single one of us have dreams and ambitions, hopes that we would like to accomplish preferences and attachments. And if we could truly see the world in a different light and bask in all of the differences that it has to offer, you'll just realize just how beautiful and how simple it all actually is. Accept the differences not as a form of weakness, but as a source of strength for you to keep pushing forward. Because to be different, it means that you have to be stronger, be wiser, be kinder, then, and only then, can you truly find the strength in your own differences. Thank you.